Well, hello again, everybody. Well, I'm sure you'll all remember that last time we were playing with this little collet chuck, and uh, I had a problem with it in that it was actually running off centre, and it was basically vibrating itself to death when we had it spinning up to 20,000 RPM. So that, of course, was uh, no good whatsoever. So I think the first thing to do is to actually have these grub screws out, and then I'm just going to try file on it, because I want to know how hard this material is, because uh, if it is very hard, that could stop us very quickly. I've got no idea. Yeah, we'll find out. Okay, so it will take a file, so we do stand a chance of cutting this on the lathe. So what I'm going to have a go at today is I'm going to drill out this hole, I'm going to put a new piece of metal inside, maybe we're going to try and press that in, and uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to drill it out 5mm again. But hopefully we're going to try and keep the accuracy of the machining good, so that when we actually do drill the hole in the centre, I'm hoping it will be in the centre this time, unlike this one. So I think the first thing to do is actually to drill out the uh, centre of this, and then we can put a sleeve inside. Now, at the moment, the precision doesn't actually matter, we're just removing metal, so I'm not using any special techniques here, it's just my free door chuck in my very uh, worn out Boxford lathe. Well, I've got to admit, the work I'm doing today comes very much under the category of experimental work. I don't know if we'll get this to work or not, but I still think it's quite interesting just to have a go. OK, so we've taken our chuck arbor and we've drilled the centre out to 8mm. I don't think we can really put any more in there because it's going to start to affect the taper which the collet slides in on. So that's about as far as we can go. We've drilled this out to 8mm. So now what we need to do is we need to find a piece of metal that we can push into here. Uh, we're not going to have any 8mm stock, so what we're going to have to do is find something bigger and just machine it down. That's the plan. Now I did actually have a look online to try to figure out how big the bore size and how big the shaft size has to be to achieve a press fit and uh, it was a bit like going down the rabbit hole it got very complicated very quickly and uh, really to a point where I couldn't really understand it um, it was describing different types of press fits and uh, I had no idea which one I wanted I'm kind of thinking I want some kind of interference fit but um, yeah, I'm not sure about the sizes. But I do know that it is very important to know what the sizes are. So I've just measured our bore side that we've just machined out. Now, of course, when you use a drill, everybody thinks that if you use an 8mm drill, you get an 8mm hole. But you don't, because even a drill's got a tolerance on it. So just measuring this, my 8mm hole is actually 8.2mm. Or certainly it's coming out as 82 on a... Well, again, this very dubious and unknown <laughs> internal bore micrometer that I'm using. I don't even know if this is accurate or not. I've got no idea. So I've gone ahead and I've set this micrometer to precisely 8mm because I do think this micrometer is quite accurate. So if I just use this on here, let's see what it comes out at. OK, this has come out as 805 So it looks as though this is uh, fairly accurate. Now, the thing about the micrometer... It is all about feel and uh, it can make a huge amount of difference the way you actually present the two surfaces. And I probably did that wrong pulling it out like that. I probably should have slid it out. Well, this is coming up about 8.01 millimetres. So, yeah, this isn't a million miles out, I don't think. So let me check my bore again. And that one has come out about 8.15 millimetres. So we are just over, we're just over um, 8 millimetres there. So the, the difficulty is, what size do I have to make my shaft? Now, I remember when, many years ago when I worked in a drawing office for a short while, they used to have a sign on the, on the wall and it said, size for size doesn't fit. 
So basically what they were saying is a like a four mil bolt doesn't fit in a four mil hole. You need a you need a bigger hole than you do a bolt size because a lot of people, you know, think that, you know, a four mil shaft will go in a four mil hole, so it doesn't. So I'm kind of thinking that if I make my shaft eight point two millimeters, it should press into here and well we should get a slight interference fit. Um don't take any of this for, for being gospel because I'm just making this up. Yeah, maybe that's what we're going to do. I'm going to try and very finely machine my shaft. I think normally what you would do is you would ream this hole to a known dimension, maybe something 8.5 using a, a precision reamer. But unfortunately, I don't have a reamer. I don't have one that will fit this. So that isn't an option I've got available to me. All I've really got is twist, twist drills and the lathe. So yeah what i'm going to do is i'm going to try to make the shaft that we're going to press into here i'm going to make it the same size as the hole maybe i'll then try and heat the uh the collet up expand it and then push our shaft in that's that's my idea that's the only thing i can think of to be honest Okay, I've finished all our spinning me nonsense now. Let's just give this a check. In theory, this should be the same size as the bore of our collet chuck, which is about 8.2 millimetres. Okay, I was going for 8.2. We've gone. For, we've got actually 8.213. Let's try that again. This time we've got 8.208, so we're in the ballpark. Okay, so I've got our two parts that have to go together, so uh, this shaft has to penetrate this hole. Uh, so what I've actually done is I have run this in the lathe a little bit and uh, just using some emery cloth I've actually put a slight taper on it so it is just slightly smaller at this end so I'm hoping that that might just help us with our press fit. We've got nothing to lose have we so let's have a go. Okay so I'm going to stand our arbor on a piece of aluminium because I don't want to damage the, uh, the threads on the end of it. So what I've got here is I've got our little shaft and I've also gone ahead and I've put some uh, blue thread locking compound on, on here because my idea was that it will act as a little bit of a lubricant and help this go in and hopefully it will also work to, um, well, to, to, to glue the two things together for lack of a better word. So I'm not sure, is this going to press in here or is it going to fly out and go through my face or through the windscreen of my truck? I don't know. Okay, just looking at the pressure gauge on my uh, press, we're putting about a ton on it there, so it's obviously not particularly oversized. So I don't think we're actually in any danger of this piece of metal flying out even though that press fit wasn't anywhere near as tight as I was really hoping to get. I think it'll be okay for the simple reason being is we're going to put some grub screws through here which are going to tie everything together anyway. So you can probably see I've actually gone ahead and I've actually turned a short shaft in my lathe here and they call this a mandrel and uh, the idea is that once we've actually turned this shaft we don't take it out of the lathe chuck so this should be perfectly concentric and be as accurate as it can be. So what we're going to do later on is we're going to mount our collet chuck kind of in reverse on here because the biggest that the collet chuck will open to is seven millimeters so this shaft is pretty much bang on seven millimeters but in theory this should run absolutely truly now so let's just confirm that so you can see there that our shaft is absolutely perfect the one that we've just machined there's absolutely no run out whatsoever and this is going to be the foundation of the rest of the machining operations now this will stay perfectly true and concentric provided we don't take it out of the chuck if we were to take this out of the chuck and put it back in again it would be back to all the errors which are inbuilt into a chuck and a free jaw chuck like this although this one is fairly good at self-centering they're not perfect and probably this piece of uh, metal that a machine isn't perfectly round anyway but the fact that we've now machined it means that it is perfectly round and it's concentric to the spindle within our lathe here. 
So I've just unscrewed the end from our collet chuck and the actual collet itself is this thing which I've got installed inside. So this is a 7mm collet. Now the thing about collet chucks, unlike something like a Jacobs chuck, is a collet chuck has almost no uh, adjustment on it. So this is a 7mm collet chuck, so it's designed to fit a shaft that's 7mm wide. You wouldn't try and fit a shaft into it that was 8mm or 6mm. It's only designed to fit a shaft which is bang on 7mm. So as you can see we've actually installed our collet chuck kind of backwards at the moment the way that it would normally running so normally this end would be gripping a drill or a tool but I'm actually using this end to actually grip the mandrel shaft so in theory this should all be perfectly aligned or certainly it's perfectly aligned to the inner collet and also the taper of the collet it's not necessarily perfectly aligned with the outside bore what i'm coming to think about and the more i work with this little mandrel i haven't found <laughs> any two machine surfaces on this thing which are actually concentric with each other it's almost um, it must have took a level of expertise to actually get it quite so wrong I can only assume that rather than trying to do all the machining operations on one machine in one chuck this has kind of been on multiple different machines and uh, those machines were somewhat lacking in pre precision so you can see that the numbers on the gauge are actually running up and down so basically that means that the body of this chuck isn't concentric with the actual um, collet so again I don't know how they've done this but it's not concentric now if we actually have to perfectly drill a hole in the end of here where our motor goes I think that would probably be okay to some extent in that everything should be in line but the problem is the center of mass isn't centered it's it's all to one side because this is out of balance so although we might do our machining now and get the whole bang on the center and everything lined up the fact that this uh, this has got more metal on one side than the other I suspect that what that would mean is that it'll still be running out of balance because the center of mass isn't at the center it's it's away from the center it's to one side so that's going to cause a lot of vibration on the machine so i think i've got to try to take a skim off here and remove a little bit of metal i'm a little bit hesitant because uh yeah i don't know if it'll work but at this stage i don't think it matters i'm just very much playing and you're along for the ride Okay, so we're centre drilling now, and when you centre drill, you want to go as fast as you can. Now we're going to change out our centre drill for a steady. Sorry, I called it a steady, it's actually a live centre that I'm using there. I'm going to crank that down a bit. Okay, so you can see that the outside of our chuck here, I'm not sure what you'd call that, would you call that the harbour? Well, our harbour now is perfectly concentric to the inner bore, because as I spin the lathe chuck, you can see the uh, DTI gauge isn't moving at all now. So everything, again, is concentric to the axis of the lathe now. So what we need to do next is we actually need to drill out the centre and uh, this is the bit which I'm actually most scared about because I'm not exactly sure how to do it. I think in an ideal world I would bore it out but I haven't got any boring bars that would be small enough to go in here I don't think because I'm not particularly into my model engineering. I've only got twist drills. I think the only other problem we've got is that if I do put a twist drill down as we saw earlier twist drills do drill a little bit oversize. I think I've got some reamers, but I'm not sure if the reamers will be the right diameter to uh, to ream it out to fit our motor shaft anyway. So I'm afraid we're a little bit blind now, and uh, probably this is where I'll cock it all up. Are you okay on top there? Are you enjoying it up there? Well, it makes a change, doesn't it? I do occasionally watch a number of people who watch my videos, and I notice that pretty much no nobody watched my last CNC video. And uh, I think it's because... My audience probably expect me to be playing with valve radios and stuff like that and when you do something a little bit different it of course maybe just comes as a comes as a bit of a shock to people but what I actually do with my channel is I'm just filming what's on the bench so one day I might have a valve radio on the bench and that's what we'll be playing with but another day it won't be a valve radio I'll be maybe working on my Chevy or I don't know, playing with a CNC machine like I am today. So I don't have any kind of a agenda as such, you know, I'm not trying to sell anything. 
and uh, and so basically I have the luxury of just filming whatever I want to film. Now, have you thought about twist drills? Perhaps you could buy these Metabo drills. They are very good. Well, I said I'm not selling anything, but if I think something's good, it's good. So I use these Metabo drills, and I've got to admit, these are reasonably well priced, and they are the best, most accurately manufactured twist drills that I've, that I've ever used. And uh, yeah, again, I think you can buy these on Amazon as well, which is another good thing. Avoid the very cheap Chinese drills, because uh, they're usually poorly ground, and uh, that will cause you problems so I think the motor shaft is uh, five mil what I think we're going to do is we're going to try and drill it out close to five and then maybe go in with a reamer but we need to check what the diameter is of the motor I think that the motor shaft itself is bang on five mil and I'm guessing that my reamers are also five mil and the problem with that is well we said earlier isn't it that uh, a five millimeter shaft won't go in a five millimeter hole so I'm not really sure how we're going to make this hole in here a bit oversized. So the last drill was a 3mm drill, the next one is 3.5mm. I'm going to go up in fairly small steps because I think that's how we will get the best centred hole in here. I'll tell you what, watching me drilling holes probably isn't very exciting, I'll bring you back when we've done. Well as you can see we've changed our drill out in favour of a 5mm reamer and uh, we've got this being pushed in here using a tap follower. Now ideally you'd probably use a floating uh, reamer arrangement but I don't have one of those so I'm not using one. So this is the best I can do. We also went ahead and measured the shaft on our motor using a micrometer and that's coming out as 4.98 millimetres and this reamer is a 5mm reamer. So I'm hoping that when we put the reamer through we might be able to just slip fit the, uh, the motor onto here. I don't know. Let's find out. So the next job is to just give our motor a try. Yeah, well I've got to admit, I am somewhat surprised that that went on there. And I think it is a... Uh, I think that's a good fit. I can kind of, kind of almost feel it pressurising as it, as it slips on, so I don't mind that, that should be okay. The question is, will it, any of it be running truer? I don't know. Well the next job will be certainly to take this out of the lathe now because we're not going to do any more turning. We're going to take this out of the lathe and then we're going to drill a couple of holes for our grub screws and uh, well I guess that will be the truth of it then. Will it work or will it not? I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. I might just break the edges on some of these corners because uh, they might be a little bit sharp. Note to self, buy the correct size tap drills. So this is actually um, a 3mm drill, the tap size 4M4 is 3.2. But unfortunately I don't have a 3.2 drill and the next size up I've got is 5. And I know that if I tap it 5mm the grub screw will be very loose. So I'm trying to just do this very delicately and hoping I don't break the tap. Well I think I've got to the point with our little collet chuck where I'm just going to have to call it because I'm not really getting to where I want to. So hopefully you can see now, I think we had about 20 thousandths of play. Now I think we've probably got, well, maybe just a bit less than 10. But what I'm finding is every time I actually take the tool out and reinstall it into the collet, this actual reading, this offset, changes. So what that's really telling me is, I think our piece of machining that we've done here is good, it's pretty much bang on. But the problem is, the little collet chuck which sits inside here, let me get one. 
So here's one of the little collet chucks that sits inside. Unfortunately, I don't think the machining on this is perfect either because, again, I'm getting some misalignment and uh, the whole idea of a collet chuck is it should be absolutely perfect and it isn't. So I'm fairly sure that I've made a decent job of machining our harbour now, but there could still be something wrong. There's actually a tapered edge on the inside of this nut, so I don't know if that tapered edge is running through. That could be pushing stuff out, but all this little uh, kind of like a basket call it this could be wrong I'm not exactly sure the levels of accuracy here are you know higher than I can probably work to with my old machines and my skill level so yeah I'm calling it I'm afraid so just as a double check I'm just running off the harbour this uh, machine surface that we trued up earlier and you can see that again that's pretty much spot on and if I actually was to transfer that and actually put it on the internal taper which is inside this harbour you would also find that it's running within a couple of hours as well so any error that we're getting now is either down to that little collet body itself or it's due to the uh, maybe the machining of this nut on the end but yeah I can't improve that I'm, I'm giving up <laughs> I failed well unfortunately we haven't quite got the result today that I was hoping for because the collet is improved but it's not really good enough. But you know sometimes it's not the destination that's important, it's a journey. And uh, I quite enjoyed playing about in the garage today, getting to play with the big milling machine and the lathe and uh, maybe learned a little bit more and uh, increased my machining skills. So I think in order to improve the accuracy of our tool holding anymore I'm going to have to dig deep and actually spend the money and actually maybe buy a precision collet and see if that gets us any nearer to what we're looking for. But I think for now let's go back inside because it's freezing cold out here and very windy outside. So let's go back into the warmth of the workshop and we will have a go at wiring up our pulse swift modulation drive for our spindle motor. Maybe that'll work out better. <laughs> Who could tell? I don't know. Okay, so we've now got our motor running at 20,000 RPM and there's absolutely no vibration. So it actually seems to have done its job. So I think until next time that'll do. Thanks very much for watching, hope to see you again very soon. Until then, bye for now.